Good morning, this is Christian here from Cold-Blooded Science. We had a decent group of hatchlings come out last night, so today I'm going to teach you guys how to set up a New Caledonian gecko enclosure for fresh hatchlings in an easy and effective way that has worked for me for many years. First, you'll need a six-quart shoebox bin or something of similar size. These tend to work perfectly for the babies. They're not too big to start them out in, so they feel comfortable eating. It's easy for them to find their food and they're very inexpensive. There's better ways to do it, but when you found a method that's inexpensive, works, and the animals thrive in them, why change it? So the first thing that we do is we take all of our shoebox bins and we drill a round hole in them with a circular saw blade. Um, for these, I think these are two and a half inch vents from roundvents.com. Probably the easiest way I found to ventilate enclosures and have them look nice. I used to drill or melt holes in the bins, but it's a pain in the butt and it takes a lot of time and it doesn't look very good and these look a lot cleaner so you'll want to do that um, you can also use like window screen mesh if you don't want to spend money on the round vents but these are only about a buck so totally worth it in my opinion so we use a simple folded paper towel sheet for the substrate for our geckos I've tried soils and cypress mulch and all that and with how many geckos I produce a year, it just is too timely to go through and clean and replace and all that. Um, plus the babies, they'll run through their food and they'll get the substrate stuck on their paws. So having um, paper towel as the substrate allows them, if they run through the food, it wipes off their feet for them. And it's cheap, it's easy to replace, and it just works well. So other than the paper towel, what I like to use is these little coconut huts from Pangea. Allows them a place to hide when the coconut huts are sprayed. They also retain some water, so it increases the level of humidity. Uh, we like to provide a small piece of cork bark. And then we'll try and always throw in a small plastic plant. You can play around with how it looks, but you just want them to be able to feel secure. The plant allows them to get up off the ground along with the cork bark and the cocoa hide. And then from there, as far as food and water dishes go, we just use contact lens cases. They're inexpensive, they work really well, um, they're not going to easily tip over by the babies, and it gives you the perfect amount so that you can measure exactly how much food your geckos are eating, and so it's easier to keep track. So you can start off with a small dab of the gecko diet in one side, and then water on the other. And I'll typically just put it close to a piece of cork or something in their tank so that way if they're on there they can easily drink the water and the food. Um, as they start to grow, I'll typically add more to one side until it's completely full. And then from there, once they get past that um, growth stage, I will feed or I will fill both sides with food and then I'll provide a little bottle cap for water. And then around that time, uh, they'll typically st stay in here for about three or four months and then they'll get upgraded into something a little bit bigger. This is one of the recent hatchlings that we're going to be setting up today. This is from a Mike Conley Dark Morph to Dark Yate to Dark Mount Cocos Troger line to Mount Cocos Frito line baby that hatched out. So various crosses of pure GT locality on this Lichianus gecko. This one hatched out pretty big. Already has some good size on him. So, whenever they're first hatched, I just plop them into the cage and I'll go ahead and I'll mist them down really well. You want the humidity to be higher after they hatch, so that way they can have um, a really easy first shed and it helps them stay hydrated. And then once they shed, we plop some food in and they're good to go. This is the egg that that baby came out of. It's really cool how they cut the egg. So they actually are born with an egg tooth. It's very sharp. It's about the equivalent of like a razor blade scale or something like that. And they will rub their snout back and forth along the egg repeatedly until it slices it open. And then once they get enough slices, they'll come out after they've absorbed their yolk. And after they have their first shed, they will lose that egg tooth. 
And then from there, they go on, they live their life, and they get big and chunky. And this guy will turn into a giant one day. And here is the sibling egg that has not hatched yet. Sometimes these take a few more days, and if they go any longer than that, I'll usually kind of tickle the egg, and that'll stimulate the baby to come on out. Another thing that we do right after the geckos hatch is we take all of their information from the labels and we will put them onto a new label. We use different colored tape depending on which species it's for. Uh, the blue I use for Legionis, the white I use for crusty geckos, um, I use green for gargoyles and red for chihuahuas. Um, so I just go ahead and I write down the locality info as well as the date the eggs were found and then the date the eggs were hatched. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So now we have this particular gecko all labeled. It has the locality information, the date the egg was found, the date the egg hatched, and that makes it really easy to keep track of them. Um, once I go ahead and put this guy in our system, he'll get his own identification number, and then once he's old enough, he'll be posted for sale. So thanks so much for watching. To give you an idea for size, this is one of our full-grown Lichianus geckos. This girl is not the mom of the baby that I showed, but she is a pure Grand Touré Mount Cocos Trogerline Lichianus gecko. And she's paired up with a Melanistic GT. So they get pretty big. They go through quite a big change as they, as they grow. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one rinsed off so we can get all the incubation media rinsed off and go ahead and get him all misted down and fed. If you guys ever want to get a Lichianus gecko or another New Caledonian gecko, we offer all of our animals for sale on morphmarket.com slash stores slash cold-blooded science. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, like, and subscribe. We will most likely do a gecko giveaway or some isopod giveaways soon.